Most of us have seen a totem pole before, but what were they actually used for? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. Totem poles are carved wooden sculptures made by the indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest Coast. From what's now Washington State, all the way up the coast to Alaska. No one can say for sure how long people have been making them, but the mid-1800s was definitely the peak for totem pole making. Once artists started using metal tools instead of stone. Totem poles served lots of purposes and are usually grouped into six basic types. Heraldic poles, house posts, mortuary poles, memorial poles, welcome poles, and yes, shame poles. Welcome poles were as tall as 40 feet and possibly even taller. They were carved with different humans, animals, and mythological figures, then placed at the edge of a lake, river, or beach to welcome guests or warn strangers. Memorial poles were built a year after someone died to honor the deceased, a bit like a tombstone. The pole was also a bit like a will because the pole was carved with the face of whoever was taking over for them. If memorial poles are like tombstones, then mortuary poles are kind of like a casket and urn wrapped into one. They were carved with boxes to hold the ashes of someone who died. They're the rarest type of totem pole and some of the tallest, usually 50 to 70 feet high. Some poles, like house posts, are just as practical as they are pretty. These poles are used as the big roof beams inside the house, usually two to four of them that help hold up the roof. Outside the house was another important pole. Heraldic, crest, or family poles were usually 20 to 40 feet tall and often had some of the most detailed carvings that told the story of their family, clan, or village. And then there were the shame poles. Also called ridicule poles, these petty posts were put up when a person or group did something bad, most often when they didn't pay a debt. Once the misdeed was made right, the pole was taken down. Like most highly skilled work, money was a big factor in who could have totem poles made and how extravagant they could be. They took weeks, sometimes months to make, and all that labor isn't cheap. Often, the artist who was hired to carve the totem pole would actually live with the family while they worked. For bigger projects, a head carver might even have a few apprentices to help out. The animals were usually ravens, eagles, owls, bears, beavers, wolves, frogs, killer whales, and a mythological creature called a thunderbird that made thunder and lightning. Totem poles were carved from red or yellow cedar, carved by hand, and painted using traditional colors. Black, white, red, yellow, purple, and blue-green. Why those six? Well, color options were limited by whatever natural pigments people could find. Black was the most common, since it was usually made from grinding soot or graphite, which could be found in a common campfire. White came from clays, limestone, or gypsum. Red came from a special clay called red ochre. Yellow can come from clay too, but usually it came from the gallstones of a buffalo. Blueberries, huckleberries, coneflowers, and wild hibiscus were used for purple pigments. And blue-green came from copper. Sadly, since totem poles are carved from wood, and wood tends to rot over time in rainy places like the Pacific Northwest, very few totem poles remain that were made before the 1900s. So, what is a totem pole? Well, like most art, it seems to have meant a lot of different things to different people across the Pacific Northwest. It's also one of the most iconic styles of Native American art. And there's definitely no shame in that. Thank you.